Hello everybody, this is Mad Cat Sphere and I want to talk about the reality of spirituality and the afterlife. This is what I think is really happening is that um, we're nothing more than in a form of psychosis or, or kind of like a sense of a, of a, of hypnotism is what it is. You know, because in reality, um, we haven't really gone anywhere. We haven't really made any real progression because really the spirits are nothing more than, than than uh, um, entities playing in the in God's backyard of His house, you know, we're just in the backyard of God's house with blindfolds on, running around in circles. Like we haven't really gone anywhere, really. That's the reality of it. And uh, the way that I describe um, the reality is nothing more than uh, a form of a of a psychosis or a um, um, hypnotism. Um, it's kind of like being um, being hypnotized by a person with the pendulum you know um, the way that we enter this reality is by first being hypnotized and following the pendulum and um, being told that you know well you're when I snap my fingers you're gonna be a person with bipolar and you're gonna have back problems you're gonna be an angry person you're gonna be temperamental and then once he snaps those fingers then boom you're stuck in that that um, mind state and that's basically what reality is, nothing more than a form of psychosis, being stuck in a form of psychosis. And, and um, where um, it's very similar also to, um, um, more deeper is to like when you're a sleepwalker. One way to describe um, the living and um, the separation and the divide between the living and the spiritual world is exactly with the sleepwalker um, scenario. Um, the the person that's alive is basically in a state of continuous um um they're stuck in the sleepwalk mode they're asleep and they're walking and they don't know it you know and it's like a form of psychosis because it's within the mind you know you're walking you're sleeping and basically you're stuck in that reality you're a sleepwalker and you're basically stuck in that reality that's what uh the best example i can make between um the a living person is that they're like a sleepwalker when a sleepwalker is stuck in their mind walking around and they don't know it you know we can uh make an example of the family members being the spirits the family members catch you walking around in the kitchen at night and then they try to come and they try to get your attention they talk to you they wave their hands in front of your face and they try to grab your shoulder and 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 kind of shake you to wake up and your family members can easily be um, translated into the spirits. The spirits are exactly like the family members in this scenario trying to wake up their their sleepwalking relative. The spirits are there trying to kind of wave their hands o over your face. You know, when you're in the living world, it's like that. They're trying to wave their hands over their face, trying to yell at you, trying to uh, shake your shoulder to wake you up and to let you notice them. And that's what it is, is that um, that's what basically is, is that in a nutshell, um, we're just stuck in a in a in a psychosis uh, state, similar to a sleepwalker, stuck in their continuous, endless state that is very difficult to wake them up sometimes. And and the and the spirits can be the relatives trying to wake up the sleepwalker. So the spirits are trying to wake up uh, this living person to notice them. So it's very similar in that way. And also, here's another little thing that's a little bit more deeper, gets more deeper into it and makes it more insulting and contradicting. Is that, um, imagine that um, you're this, you know, you're, you're continuing to be this, this person that's stuck in the sleepwalk mode, which is basically uh, an, an entity um, hypnotized or stuck in a psychosis, believing in the reality that they're alive. And um, imagine that you're stuck in this, this position, this mental state, and you have these spectators or these people from the outside looking in, looking at you. Well, the thing is, though, is that um, let's say that in this state, in this reality, in this reality that you're in, you're trying to climb a mountain. Well, the thing is, though, is that in reality, in the spiritual world, there is no distance and there is no space. So you're not climbing anything. You're just climbing a thought or a concept or an idea of climbing a mountain. So these people are looking at you while you're stuck in this 
and this uh psychosis this uh this state that you're in this reality that you're stuck in and they look at you and basically what you're doing to them in reality what you're doing is you're just clawing at the air and what are these people gonna think to themselves when they see this spirit pretending to climb a mountain when in reality they're looking like fools clawing at the air they're not climbing anything because in reality there is no distance like I said there is no distance there is no space and when you look beyond when these people from the outside looking in they're looking beyond the the solid forms that's there and they're looking at the reality of just an entity by himself clawing at the air and they don't know what the hell you're doing but you know what you're doing and you're just basically making a fool of yourself trying to pretend and make believe that you're in this reality so that you can learn how to climb a damn mountain so that's that's basically what the reality of what the living is so basically you're looking like a damn fool that's the reality of it all of us that are that are alive we're here because we're not enlightened you know but the thing is though is that um what's contradicting about that is that the spirits are all not enlightened even the enlightened are not enlightened you know because the 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 truth of the matter is is that is that the spirits are trying to create realities and alternate dimensions because the sad truth is is that they're trying to run away and escape themselves they're trying to run away and escape from their eternal eternal existence they cannot run away from themselves so that's why they had to become reborn in a form of amnesia in a new reality in a new alternate uh way of perceiving themselves and their reality they're ultimately trying to run away from their endless continuous reality and they try to create this ex excuse that they're here to learn but the problem is this is the problem with that idea is that no matter what the hell you're doing whether you're alive or dead you're always observing and you're always learning regardless of what alternate form of reality that you're in so the fact so so the the excuse that they're here to learn more about about how it is to live is just um unfounded and it's completely idiotic this whole structure of this reality is completely idiotic like really it, you know if you think about it it's complete insanity seeing this entity trying to climb a mountain when there is no mountain you know trying to uh, um become stuck become um um to put yourself in a form of hy uh, uh, hypnosis and psychosis in order to to put yourself in a different mind state in order to run away from yourself to become something else to perceive something else when in reality it's all one same thing that you can't run away from it's complete insanity what the entities are doing to themselves complete insanity what they are doing and just to end this real quick um, i just wanted to talk about this learning concept that they've constructed the thing is though is that why is it that we entities cannot learn from other entities they can telepathically send us information about anything that we want to learn about and give us images and sensations as real as as we were there without actually being there do we really need to be born i've talked about this in my other video do you really need to be born to learn how it is to be a psychopath or can you just be a smart person and just get the gist of what it is to be a bad person to kill other people do you really need to learn how it is to eat shit to know that shit is not good to eat I mean, the entities can telepathically learn and teach each other this. We've been alive for thousands of years. We know how to teach one another exactly as if we were there without having to be stuck in this psychosis and being stuck in this place. And the thing is, though, is that these people want to learn how to be 
how to develop character and personality, but sometimes as a double-edged sword because then when they die, they carry that new character and personality and it weighs them down and it doesn't allow them to then cross over and become enlightened. Because maybe perhaps when the spirits lived as an uh, old woman, when they died naturally, they were able to exit the body and go straight to heaven. But then when they come back again as a crazy boy, the boy commits suicide at the age of 15 and then they become stuck in the in the earthbound world and they, it becomes difficult for them to cross over to heaven so they they sabotage themselves by picking incorrect roles and they hurt themselves without becoming really enlightened so it's a risk so this is my advice to you we might as well just live out the lives that we're living now to the best that we can learning the most that we can experiencing the most that we can and loving the most that we can so that when we die we don't need to ever come back ever again we can finally be finished this is Matt Cat sphere thank you guys for watching